those dogs are very bad. And they're both going to get very severely punished. In fact, Willow's already locked in the bathroom. Yeah, you don't mess with Sarah. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't mess with Sarah. Oh, poor girl. The babies. Yeah, Sarah's still sitting on some eggs, but I don't think they're going to hatch. So this is Ruth and Esther, keeping with the women of the Bible theme. Ruth has the bigger wings. Esther has the littler ones. They're already getting so big. It's only been a couple days. I'm looking at them already. Wow. So it's Bonko night, and I'm hosting. So, so far I've made a lemon cake. I have some garlic knots with dipping sauce. I made some pinwheels, which are real easy. You just spread a tortilla with cream cheese, put in some lunch meat, and um, roll it up. And now I'm making the mini caprices. You take a piece of mozzarella cheese. I prefer the buffalo mozzarella, but I don't have any. You take a basil leaf, a fresh basil leaf. Then you take a cute little toothy pick. Can't do this left-handed and skew it and there you go there's no carbs gluten free for those that are gluten free and um, they're really yummy what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle this with a little balsamic vinegar and then just serve it as it is for a little handheld appetizer so I have a lot going on here I only have 40 minutes to get everything done hey folks Rainy says it's time for me to tell a story about the old days and Growing up in a small town, Troy, Montana, it was uh, a lot smaller and slower time for the most part than it is now. And, uh, I did get in a little trouble now and then. Nothing too awful serious, but just enough to know that I wasn't doing things quite right. I uh, figured out when I was pretty young that... Uh, God was looking over my shoulder. I came to a place when I was about 18, or no, I guess only about 17, 16 or 17, where after I had my driver's license and bought my first car, which was a, a 58 Plymouth that I paid, I think, uh, 675 bucks for or something like that. It was four years old. And it actually had been driven by a little old lady that lived in the Yak, Montana, and only drove it to the grocery store and back. And uh, she traded it off on a 62. So my dad running the Chrysler dealership, he knew it was a good car. He'd done everything that had ever been done to it, so he made me a good deal on it. And I got it for what, basically what they had into it. Anyway, uh, as you come into Troy from the Idaho border, Finnegan, I don't need your help. There's a real steep hill that uh, you yeah. come down called Yak Hill. It's got a lot of windy curves and uh, it's only about maybe a mile and a half long or so, but it's uh, really twisty. And uh, in those days, the road was a lot worse than it is today. It's wider today and the curves have been gentled out a little bit. Uh, Someplace along the way in the 80s or 90s, they did a little blasting in there and made the road a little nicer. But it's still twisty, even now. And uh, so I was coming back from, I think, Bonner's Ferry. I had about three kids in the car. And we were flying along the top of the flat before you got to the hill. And a 55 Pontiac pulled up behind me. And uh, I thought, well, we'll just outrun him going down this hill. So I stepped on it, we got to the hill, because obviously we knew the hill, and he had Idaho plates on, so I don't know if he knew the hill or not. But we took off down the hill, and we were going so fast that every corner you could hear the tires hollering on, and his tires hollering on. And uh, The sides of the hill is about a 2,000 foot drop down to the river, so if, chances of actually going off the road and, and surviving it were pretty thin. And nowadays there's nice guardrails along it. Then there was only one or two little spots that even had a bumper on it. But uh, 
we got down through there and he was right on my tail all the way down the hill we got down on a flat which is a, probably about a two maybe two and a half mile straight stretch and uh I had that little Plymouth opened right up. I would go, say we're probably going 109 to 112 miles an hour. And he was still right on my bumper. He couldn't get around me and, and I couldn't get away from him. And just before you get to Troy, there's another bridge that goes over the Kootenai River. And uh, it actually, you could pass on it. It had a passing zone in those days and it's barely wide enough for two cars. But just as I got to the bridge, there was a car doing 40 miles an hour in front of me. And I had to slam on the brakes to get down from hitting him. And there were two other cars or three other cars coming at us. The bridge is about a quarter mile long or better. And I just got down there and he was the kid. The guy was right on my tail end. And I pulled in behind this guy and got down to his 40 miles an hour and blew a tire. The tire exploded all over the place. So when a thread left on it, I hobbled off to the side of the road and changed the tire. And, you know, good Lord, somebody was looking out for me. <laughs> so... That shows my first sign. The second sign was when I bought my 59 Plymouth one, one year later. Uh, There's a doctor here in town who had a big Cadillac, and he said he could make it from our city limits to Libby city limits uh, in 10 minutes, since 18 miles. And uh, so we tried to do that, uh, me and a couple friends of mine. And we pushed that little Plymouth as hard as we could, and it's not a straight road either. It's kind of windy, and at that time there was one real big corner on it. But uh, nowadays that corner's gone too. But we didn't quite make it. We took us about 11 minutes to make the trip. And I idled down we hit the city limits and got down to the speed limits. We went into town and I made a turn down by the ballpark. And the left front U joint, or ball joint fell out from under the tire. And the, fed, the wheel went up into the fender well. And the front end skidded along the ground. So, you know what? Those two things right in a row in a short period of time gave me an idea that somebody was looking out for me, and I'm still here, so apparently he's still looking out for me. So that's about my story for tonight. Uh, we'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. So um, Bunko was great. All the girls love my food, and um, I was really happy about that. But I need to tell you what happened today because it's actually pretty funny, and I wish we would have had a camera rolling. So we take Sarah, the chicken, out to the coop at least three times a day because, you know, they won't poop in their nest or anything like that. So we take her out, and she takes a sand bath, and she'll eat, and she'll drink, and, and then she'll let us know when she's ready to come back. Well, last night... I had let her out and I went to go get her and she was on the front porch and I thought well that's really weird because she really doesn't fly. So today I let her out and I start walking back to the house and I hear this little squawk and Sarah was walking back up to the house. She just didn't want to leave her chicks or what she thinks that are her chicks. So. So at the same time that I was walking up towards Sarah to grab her, the dogs got out. Oh my goodness. I called for Mick. It was like a Laurel and Hardy film. I was running after the chicken. Mick was running after the dogs. He tripped over the electric fence, fell down. The dogs were um, trying to get the chicken. The chicken was trying to get the dogs. I had one dog and I was trying by the collar and um, Mick was trying to get Finn and ran and got the leashes and um, the chicken squawking, the dogs are barking. It was just mayhem. And I really wish you would have had that on film because it was, it was, now that I think about it, it was pretty funny. Um, thankfully, the chicken was not hurt and we're trying to teach the dogs to leave the chickens alone, even though they are in a big coop. But, um, so that's what happened today with Sarah. So anyway, we hope you had a wonderful day today. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, we're off to the big city tomorrow. Um, Mick has another doctor appointment. So God bless and take care, and we love you. Good night.